Hello and welcome! In this tutorial I'm going to show you a poster shader that, based on the object position, changes the poster image as well as the damage on the edges. And even if you have two of the same posters, they will always have different edge damage, as it happens in real life as well, thus giving you an illusion of endless iterations. So let me explain how it's going to work. We will need a texture atlas, where every colored square you see here is an iteration of your texture, so in my case, those are going to be different poster images. The texture atlas can be of any size, 2x2, 3x3, as long as your texture covers every square in a uniform fashion. Usually, UV goes from 0 to 1, however, in our case, to match our texture atlas, it should look something like this, where it is repeated as many times as we have iterations of our texture. Then, Unreal should pick a random one and have it occupy the full UV space. That will be our goal. So, let's see how it works in the engine. Here is my color map, containing 25 variations. However, if I plug it to the base color right now, the engine reads it as if our atlas is occupying the UV space from 0 to 1, which is not what we want. So, if we bring in texture coordinate, and we provide the correct tiling, which is for you 1 divided by the amount of columns we have, so 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2, and for V, 1 divided by the amount of rows, which is also 5, so also 0 0.2, we will have the correct tiling. So now, if we add add node, and we start adding 0 0.2 you see that we are switching to another texture however we want it to be done procedurally based on the object position so going back to our small visualization when we were adding 0 0.2 in U we were basically switching which column we want and then, by adding 0 0.2 in V, we were switching the raw that we want, so th the intersection of those two lines became the texture that was displayed, and we want it to be done automatically. We will start with bringing in the object position. Since object position varies for every object in the scene, it's a good starting point for creating a random seat. Then we will need a noise with some smaller value. However, both object position and noise are vector 3 and our texture coordinates is vector 2, we cannot just simply add them. We will need to convert this into vector 3. Uh, I mean, sorry, vector 2. So if we break it into components and append it into vector 2, this should work, however, we are losing one dimension, so it won't affect our randomization, which is not what we want. We want all of the axes to affect the randomization, so we will just simply add two of those axes and append them. So now we can add all of them together. Now, if you check the shader, you see that we have a problem. Our images are not positioned correctly in the UV space. Why is that? It's because the engine doesn't know that we want it to be constrained to only the rows and columns we established in our texture atlas. Remember that when we were adding the values, we were only adding 0.2s because that's the position of the rows and columns in our UV space. So let's tell Unreal what we want by simply adding seal. What seal does is it takes the input value and rounds them up to the next integer. However, we don't want integers, we want numbers with a step of 0.2. So we multiply it with 0.2 and we append it to the vectors that we add to our texture coordinates. So now we should have the correct stepping. And as you can see, it works with all the axes controlling the randomization. However, you can notice that some of our textures are never displayed. Why is that? It's because our noise 
goes only from minus 1 to 1, which is only 3 integers, 1, 0, and minus 1. And we need at least 5 for our texture atlas to work, because that's how much rows we have. However, we cannot put from 0 to 4, though it is 5 integers, because seal rounds every input up. So even if we have 0 0.1, it will be converted to 1. So it is very unlikely that we can have a 0. So we need a number of 5 to work correctly. So now, all of our textures have a possibility to spawn based on the object's position. Now, let's create the edge damage. For that, you will need a map that is constrained to only rows, and they must style, the reason for which I will explain a little bit later. So I advise you to just stop the damage at the border of your map. And you might want to have two channels, as I have here, one for masking, and the other one that covers a little bit more is for the white paper edge damage. So, once you have the map, you want to repeat all the steps we had for the color map with one difference. You don't want to seal your U coordinate when you append it into vector 2. The reason for this is if I visualize, once you constrain it, you cannot go beyond the columns you have. However, the way we painted our damage, we can go in any position and our damage will still be viable. So basically, this gives you an endless uh, variation of your damage, because basically this is already a little bit different from this. And imagine what will happen once we have damage on every side, and every side will have just a little bit different damage, but the layering of all of the four of them will give you endless iterations. And the reason we wanted our damage to tile is because once your U will go beyond, it will get repeated on the other side. That's why we need our map to be tileable. The next step is to overlay four layers of our edge damage. So bottom, top, side and another side. Each one should have different random seed, which you can achieve by adding any random number to the object position and feeding this to the noise. You will also have to rotate your top and sides edge damages, which is easily done with a custom rotator node, where you have to specify the rotation center, which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for the center of the UV and you have to specify the amount of rotation, where 1 is 360 degrees. For, so for the top, we will need 0 0.5, and for the sides, 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. Then you multiply all of them with each other, and if you feed it to the base color, this is what you'll get. And the outcome of our four layers will never repeat, because every single layer has a different random seed that is feeding on the position of the object. So now, if we change our material to masked and we plug our edge damage outcome into opacity mask and our base color this color map, that is what we will get. And we can always push the shader much further by adding, for example, paper edge damage, as I did here. I also added normals and roughness and dirt layers. But you can have any other kind of layers. Maybe even components that assemble the poster itself. This technique can be applied to any kind of texturing. For walls, floors, any assets which you can vary not only by the base textures and switching between those, but also by overlaying dirt, graffiti, moss, changing the color of certain area, and so on. So, thank you for watching. 
hope it was useful for you.